Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and I would suggest that you try Redeemer. Are you a fan of brawlers? Because I quite like my brawlers. I certainly quite like my brawlers. And this one is brought to you by Sabaka Studio. This one, unlike most brawlers, is done from a Diablo-like sort of pseudo-isometric perspective. But make no mistake about it, there's no Diablo. It's all about punching people, throwing things at people, environmental kills, and the occasional gunshot. This came out on the 1st of August, and it received middling reviews at best. Some of which for ridiculous reasons, like, well, you know, the, the story and the character development in this game about punching people wasn't up to snuff as I roll my eyes to the point of dizziness. But the other stuff was about bugs, animation decoupling, and general performance problems. That's entirely valid. That was, however, six patches ago. They are now on version 1.06. I have not experienced those things, and this is after about, as usual with my suggestion series, about an hour, an hour and a half or so of play on stream. So this is not a critique by any stretch. Just a, maybe you want to have a look at this, because you probably missed it kind of video exactly what it is. Let me show you what it's all about. So, there's a main story mode which doesn't seem to have a great deal of replayability, I must admit, although they do have a hardcore difficulty as well, and arenas. So, if you like the combat, you can continue to play various arenas. And we've gone six levels in. This is how many levels there are. Actually, quite a significant amount. I've seen people beat it after about maybe six and a half to seven hours. It's really very much going to depend on how good you are. Let's get in, shall we? We have been captured, and 10th rate Wolverine over there, or possibly Tyrant from one of the Resident Evils, is a little upset. We're going to have to deal with him. That is the worst cell door of all time. And as I mentioned, very much a game about punching people, and in this case, hitting them with their own arms. Now... This game has a big emphasis on charged up attacks, as you will probably notice. Also, on weaponry that breaks after a limited number of uses, and on some rather lovely finishing moves. As you can probably notice, it's fairly melee oriented. Now, first things first. There have been some weird comparisons with this game, because I was looking at what everybody else said about it. I'm like, oh, well, it's got an Arkham combat system. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it really does not. There's a, oh, it's got a counter. And there's a warning that incoming attacks are coming. Therefore, it's Arkham. That is absolute nonsense. Someone else said, it's Hotline Miami. Really? Really? You mean the action puzzle, everything dies in one hit game where precision is key? Yeah, I don't think so. It's not that either. There is value in comparing games to other games. It's a very easy critique device and a bit of useful consumer information. You know, people can sort of figure out whether or not they'd like a game or not. But sometimes the comparisons are woefully, stupidly inaccurate. That is definitely one of them. And Arkham is another, by the way. Arkham is all about a very cinematic, flowing combat system in which you are moving sometimes almost illogically from person to person, like literally flying across the screen to do it. This is a far more traditional brawler. It just happens to be from a less usual perspective than you'd expect most brawlers to come from. You pick up these limited weapons, you have a lot of these finishing moves, and in this case, as you can see, we have a bunch of mutants that are engaged with the other kinds of enemies. Now, up to this point, I've mostly been fighting soldiers in different kinds of armor and some heavy dudes that have power armor and flamethrowers, which has made the whole punching thing a little bit tricky. And there's been a focus on trying to avoid gunshots, disarmament, which could can be done in certain situations when a green icon appears, you can hit the left control and the left mouse button in order to disarm. And also environmental kills. There's quite a lot of those. Not only can you throw things at people, which you probably noticed. You can throw barrels and crates and all manner of things, which is pretty effective. But you can also do one-off environmental kills if you're near the right thing, like impale somebody on a tree, or throw them into a fire, or drown them in a pit of tar, and all that sort of thing. Pretty damn messy, frankly. And this combat in particular is deliberately messy. 
But the counter system is nothing like Arkham at all. It is a timed combo combat system when it comes to the counters, but hitting it just when a red thing appears ain't good enough. Sure, that's a warning. You are going to have to hit them as the swing comes in. And there is this big emphasis on this extremely enjoyable set of incredibly meaty melee attacks based on this charge. Charge your kick up to full, you're going to do some major damage. Charge your punch up to full, you'll do some major damage. Equip a melee weapon in the process, you're going to do some major damage. Don't think anyone's too surprised by that. That's really what the game is all about. Boom! Kind of like that. And really, there's no actual combo meter in the game. Notice that. There's a huge emphasis in a lot of brawlers and the Arkham-style brawler for a combo meter and maintaining those combos. There's no emphasis here on combo at all. There is no combo meter to speak of. You do regenerate health through kills. You regenerate more health through finishing moves. But as it turns out on these mutants, you cannot do the finishing moves. So it's worth bearing that in mind. But there are guys in here that I absolutely can do finishing moves on. A couple of stealth kills as well for good measure. There we go. Pull his arms off. Why not? We kind of want to... You know, there's a guy with a shotgun. Maybe we just want to hit him with a chair. And then we can engage him in melee combat. We could also try and disarm his weapon. But if you don't do it well, you're going to be shot down quite quickly. I guess there's an Arkham comparison there. But what I have to say up to this point so far is that the brawling is great. The limited use melee weapons help to vary up the combat quite nicely and make sure you don't stick with anything for too long. These electric prods are relatively common weapons that you can get a lot of, but the less common weapons like hammers and axes and swords, those tend to last a little bit longer and they also tend to be more deadly with their own unique finishers and all sorts of things like that. We'll just wait for him to get out of the way. You know, we may be able to pull off a self finisher on him and he is a far tougher guy. And in the process, maybe we could grab a shotgun and do that. The gunplay is definitely not the strength of it. I would certainly say that. The pistols and the assault rifles don't feel too great. Although I'll say the shotgun feels like it is very powerful because it bloody well is very powerful. There's no doubt about that. So charge that up and smash our way through. It's the charge attacks that are really the way to go. In the initial version of the game, they apparently didn't emphasize the fact that these things existed at all. They didn't tell you until much later on in the game. So a lot of these guys that did reviews based on about an hour of gameplay, and yes, that happens more than anyone wants to admit in the games industry. It really does, and it sucks. That's why I clearly label my stuff as first impressions or discovery or anything like that. I just close out of the box that I haven't finished the game. It's very important to do that so you're not misled didn't understand how half the game mechanics worked. So as a result, their impressions may very well have been worse. But I'm not discounting the bugs. In this version, as you can very clearly see, you're not seeing a lot of bugs. We saw in about an hour and a half a couple of animation decouples and all sorts of things like that. But they were cosmetic bugs. They did not affect the nature of the combat or anything like that. And they've had six patches to fix it. So right now, for a $15 game, what you're actually seeing at this point is far from a buggy limited mess, but a very enjoyable, very meaty brawler. I want to back out this level and show you another one because I've got to admit, up to this point, this level has been weaker than the others. Simply comes down to the fact that the enemies aren't so interesting. So let's go to Going Down in Flames, where you're going to encounter a lot more stuff. You're going to see a lot more finishers and all sorts of things like that. Those mutants, I mean, you know, it's kind of fun to pull their arms off, things like that. But these enemies are way more challenging. And I can also show you a bit of a variety of melee weapons. And some of the kills that you can do with them. These guys are far more interesting to fight. They're far more capable. I guess they just wanted to do a horde-like level. And that's probably why that ended up the way that it was. But I have to admit, as much as it was nice to see a little bit of a variance in enemies, they're not in as interesting as fighting these guys. And I would love to show you that. Environmental kills really get my blood pumping, I've got to admit. I love them. I think they're a lot of fun in an awful lot of different games. And while the gunplay may be weaker, throwing rocks at people, nah, not so much. 
and you can really get some nice fluidity going as you roll into a kill after a stun. There's a lot going on with it. Now, in terms of longevity, it's a bit of a concern. Like I said, six to eight hour campaign by the looks of it. Fairly limited replayability. I'd love to see some more unlocks. The unlocks seem to be lore and concept art based, which is not really that interesting. I have to admit, but they do have a set of arenas, so if you want to play more of this and face off against increasingly difficult waves of enemies, the game definitely does have that for you. And that may very well be enough. As it stands, though, if I am looking for what is pretty much a brainless good time with a decent skill ceiling and actually quite a lot of nuance available to the combat if you care to learn it... Oh, wow! I had no idea an enemy could do that. He actually climbed up the wall and jumped on me. That was really neat. I've never seen them do that before. If you want a game like that, that, th that, this is that. Of that, I have, I could have absolutely no doubt. Smashing people into pillars, grabbing limited use weapons off the ground, following up with charged attack after charged attack, kicking people right across the room, Bruce Lee style. That is what Redeemer offers. And when it is really going full blast, and when you're going up against a wide variety of tough enemies that you're having to carefully engage that cannot be taken down with the Arkham style of just right-click at the right moment, that actually do require significant more effort, it definitely gives me the vibe of old-school brawlers, particularly when I'm picking up those weapons, those limited-use weapons, and smashing them off of people. It reminds me of Streets of Rage, picking up those limited-use lead pipes and going crazy with them. Those were a lot of fun. This game is no exception in that regard. Yes, and put him into the pillar. There we go. That's what this game is, in a nutshell. If you're looking for a story, it's cheesy. They have these motion comic style cutscenes to tell the story based on these fairly stereotypical characters. There's nothing really special going on there. Honestly, it's a brawler. I def That's not what I require from my brawlers to actually be any good. I want great, satisfying, bloody combat. I'm getting exactly that. I'm facing off against a decent variety of challenging enemies in the process. No complaints about that. They're keeping the gunplay- Oh god, that's- <laughs> Flamethrower. They're keeping the gunplay relatively limited. Powerful guns, but keeping the ammo count low. So you are still focusing on what matters, which is comboed punches, blocking their attacks, countering them at just the right time, not spamming the counter button, because that, as I mentioned, does not work and having a messy, messy time of it all. It's almost like playing the Monk in Diablo 3, but with a wider moveset and more as a brawler and less of an RPG, because no, there are no skill trees, nothing along those lines. That could be definitely considered a negative, because you're not learning new moves as you go, but I think the combat system has a lot more depth than some people have given it credit for, honestly and they haven't learned what this game can offer. Thankfully, the tutorial is a little better now in that respect. Some co-op would be nice. Some more content would be nice. But for $15, I think this is a very, very fun brawler indeed. And hell, if $15 is not your bag, well, you can wait for inevitable sales until it is. So what I hope I've done for you today is what I've been doing throughout this whole series. Show you something you might have missed. And in this case, perhaps missed, not because it wasn't out there and it wasn't showing itself off, but because on launch a few weeks ago, it was not as polished as it was now. Justifiable, perhaps, to get its lower scores, but I'm glad that I decided to play it weeks after, because I had a pretty gleeful time on stream with it, as you will find out if you go and check out the stream VOD on the unofficial channel, or if you happen to be a Twitch subscriber. There you go, folks. I suggest, if you are into brawlers, have yourself a look at Redeemer, available for $15, or your goddamn don't stand in the fire, or your uh, regional equivalent. 
My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, by all means, do feel free to click the like button. If not, the dislike button is right over there. And as usual, we are offering discussion over it on our official subreddit. And the link you will find in the comments section below. Ouch. I'll see you next time.